Good morning. This is Five Tons with Guns coming back with you. My name is Casey. And uh, <clears throat> I got a new project going here. Uh, what I want to do, uh, I've been seeing this on the YouTube channel, like mainly Manny CA. And they're taking 40 caliber brass cutting it down, swaging a bullet into it for a 45 ACP projectile. And I, I think I'd like to try my hand at that. You know, I'm, I'm not a stranger to uh, bullet swaging. We've done the 22 rimfire uh, bullet swaging kit from Corbin. Uh, for about 20 years. It's a tedious thing. I'm thinking that uh, this might not be as tedious as making two, two, three rounds out of 20, 22 uh, rimfire brass. So, <clears throat> in order to do that, I knew I needed to have a good saw. And all the saws I saw on the market, Harbor Freight, I guess they no longer sell those. Uh, that was not adequate. The closest thing that was adequate was uh, arrow cutting saw. And uh, anyway, I just decided to go ahead and make my own. <clears throat> and here it is. We've got a, a motor from a food processor. That's about 3150 RPM. Pretty quiet. We also have a, a vice. And the heart of the machine is, in my opinion, the vice. Because we'll take this off here. It will tilt it up. We've got a, a horizontal groove in here in the jaw. And that's going to self-center just about everything that you're going to come across. You put your cartridge in here. Into the groove. Tighten it down. Here is your... Uh, <clears throat> your depth gauge as to how you want to cut it. It's got a lock nut on it. This fits on the side of the vice jaws and they are held on by two, two rare earth magnets. Yeah, thank you. Rather than drilling holes in a nice vice, why not use the machinist vice uh, magnets? Now we'll put this in here. We can adjust this. Okay, we'll turn on our master switch. We've got a safety switch here, panic switch, whatever you might want to call it. If anything happens, why, uh, you know, you're going to let go of it naturally. So here we go. It'll take about three seconds to uh, cut one of these. And here we go. We can do a little chamfering here. And you've got a straight cut. Now I'm cutting, for example, I'm cutting a little bit too short, shorter than what uh, I believe I need to go, just to show you how accurate this machine is. Here's, a, here's another shorty. If 
Here's one where we cut the, the case head off of the uh, 40 caliber brass. And that's the uh, thickest part of the, uh, the brass right there is the web. So if, you, if you're into jewelry making, like I've seen some people do, why uh, you could do this. <clears throat> we'll do a few more of these. And we'll show you, you know, what I needed was something that was uh, absolute, accurate, repeatable, all the time, every time. There's the other one. Okay, I think you got the idea on this. And your uh, your depth gauge, which will be stuck on with the, with two rare earth magnets. And you've already seen that this works. Now, uh, let's try, I know a lot of you guys are doing 300 blackout. Let's do, uh, let's cut a 300 blackout out. Even though uh, we we do have a taper on two two three, we'll, we'll we'll see how accurate this is. They say to cut it right on the shoulder, like that. Okay, let's go. Here's a lot of them. Okay, now look at the... Even though this is a tapered case, look how straight it did cut. It may be off a thousandth or two. But you cut them a little bit long anyway, and then you trim them back for 300 blackout. So this saw will do uh, 300 blackout also. <clears throat> also, it will do uh, a few other things. We'll rig up here, and we'll show you what else this will do. I need to get. We've got our, our tooling mounted here. So you'll take your shotgun shell. Like if you want to take uh, like a quarter inch off of your crimp, a worn out crimp, why well, you can do that with this machine. And we'll show you how. Okay, you get your tooling in there, and you'll take a, uh, an easy out with a handle on it, whatever kind of handle. Stick that into the primer hole, like that. Push it through. Lift up. And on shotgun shells, I like to turn them. See how nice of a cut that is. Straight and perfect. Okay. Here's another trick we'll show you that you can do with this machine. <clears throat> I 
we'll take, here's another little tool that we made to uh, fit inside of a shotgun shell. I think we can tighten it up. And if you want to cut cut the ribs off of shotgun shells for jewelry or making rings or uh, a button, you cut the primer here for a, a button. Okay, here we go. Here's how this works. This is not being resized. Let's get it. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Usually I like to turn it, but uh, this will come out good. Okay, see now you've got a, uh, a little bit hot. You've got a perfect rim here. And the burrs are already laid over for you. You got very much, very little work to uh, to do to uh, bring these to where you want to have them. Here's a, an example of uh, a number of them. How precisely you can cut. Okay, here we go. Unscrew that. Here's how that looks. The base wad still in there. Here's an example of uh, some pr pretty uh, precision cutting that this machine is capable of. And see how thin you can get that and still leave the primer on. Here's the base wad. Also, <clears throat> if you want to turn 3-inch Magnum 410 back to 2.5-inch, uh, here's the bushing for that. Slip it in there like that. Index it in your groove where you want to cut it. Now you're back to two and a half inch for 410. <clears throat> I, uh, uh, this is a pretty uh, first order machine for me. I can do just about everything with it now as far as uh, Cutting cases, modifying. You know, I can do the 300 blackout. I can do the 40 caliber to 45 caliber projectiles. I'm still working on uh, 
making a uh, a core mold. Like I'm gonna make a core mold uh, to swage these bullets in and to make them fatter. So this little machine. Uh, now the heart of it, again, I'll repeat myself. The heart of it is to get a vise with the horizontal groove on your jaw. That way you can hold anything in there straight and you're going to get a straight cut. Every time. And uh, it's fast. I'm probably going to save up all my 4D brass and I'll probably do a couple of thousand of them if I think that this is the right thing, way to go. If they work well for me, I'll probably make a couple of thousand of them. So I need a machine that uh, is absolute and uh, not a lot of variables and uh, consistent and will hold up for maybe a couple, three, maybe five thousand rounds of cutting. Now the blade, got a three inch blade with a quarter inch arbor on it, 16th inch wide. That's what we're using on this one. Uh, whatever motor that you may find, and there's a lot of them out here. This in here only turns about 1500, so that would not do very well at all. Vacuum cleaner motor. Another food processor motor, high speed. You've got the you can mount these on any way you want. Everything that uh, has been powder coated here, the blue and the yellow, are things that we have fabricated. Uh, the Two inch by quarter inch angle. We pull it, we cast that, making bar stock. We built the, uh, the little guard. We built our, uh, our box here. And we got our little safety switch here. And then your override. To shut everything down. I'll show you what I was doing to uh, cut down shotgun shells. And if you'll come over here, I'll show you an example of what I, I've been working on. And I, I was using this to cut down the shotgun shells. That's a very tedious and laborious thing, and you have trouble getting the part that you cut out out of the hole here. And not very precise either. It's more like a solution looking for a problem. And it's, uh, my opinion, it's a piece of junk. It's too slow. You know, you can whip out, you can whip out 40 caliber brass probably about uh, maybe 10 every minute. Or this here, you've got five minutes in each one, each uh, shotgun shell you're cutting down. And here's some examples of how I've been cutting them down. These three, uh, I used a roll crimp on a drill press to crimp them down. What I really want to do is make these little tactical shells, and I'll figure it out. Also, if you do have a, uh, a worn out shotgun shell, where you've cut the, the crimp, the bag crimp down, here's a tool that you can reform the crimp with. It's got kind of like knife edges on it. And this will uh, start your crimp without having to do a lot of skiving 
inside if any at all. I've used this and it works really well. Anyway, uh, that's our saw. Everything stores nicely that I need to have on hand. I've got my chamfering deburring tool. I've got another bushing. Here's my uh, shotgun shell turner. Just put that in the primer pocket. You can turn it to get a real good even cut. Here's the bushing for 410. That stores there. Here's the, uh, the deal for uh, cutting the ribs off the end of the, of the shotgun shell. That's just a, uh, a 10 by 32 thread, turn it into a 38 special uh, round, and you just tighten it up. And that way you can turn your shotgun shell. You can make this. That stores here also. Also, these uh, holders are uh, high brass paper shotgun shells like these. These were my father's, so I wanted uh, part of my father on this tool here. It's compact. I can carry it around. Bring it outside here like this. I want to show you the underneath side of it. So you'll get some kind of an idea on what how it comes together. See now this bolt here with the lock nut is threaded into the cutting board here with the nut on top. That's for your motor just cantilever it over and you need something to steady that up in order for it to cut straight. So that's the apparatus to do that. These four bolts hold the motor mounts on. And these big bolts here hold the vise on. I was a little bit hesitant on whether I could get it straight. device to the uh, blade, getting it straight. So this bolt here, I've got a cam washer on the carriage bolt where if it does not get straight, why well, I can I can straighten it out with this. Just put a screwdriver in here. And I can turn it which way I want it to go. These are off like uh, 50 and 60s uh, Chevrolet troughs with the wood beds to hold the bed down and cam them around where they'll be on there straight. You can get them out the Chevrolet garage. Also, you've got your tool here. That's held on by magnets. That's for uh, changing your blade and your lock nut on your adjusting your depth gauge. Okay, I think I've showed you just about everything I can uh, today on it. I'll put this back. And that's how it stores. This particular little motor does have a double mandrel on it. I suppose uh, a guy could put a buffer wheel on it or whatever he wanted to do on the other end. Now this end is right hand threaded. That's a good machine. Uh, 
uh, I believe I believe it will get me through thousands of uh, cuts and last me a long time, and I won't ever have to work on it again. Well, that's it for that, and uh, I've got a lot more work to do. I've got the core mold to make. I need to make a core cutter. I've got the dies to do it with, and uh, you'll you'll see that. Also, probably next video. Here's another thing that I've uh, been playing with that I uh, discovered by accident. Uh, the, these little bullets. They're 45, 410. And I'll show you about that on our next video. See the hole on the back for a uh, large primer, number 209 shotgun shell primer. Here's another one that's uh, not processed yet. But uh, I think I'll show you about these on our next video next week. That'll be it for all today and, and we'll thank you for watching and, and uh, push the like button and subscribe. And uh, we got a lot of good information to uh, show you and tell you about and some good stories. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.